Lovely weather we're having today. All right, welcome back to the hangar, everybody. We've got some good work to, uh, in store for today, even though the weather's really crappy outside. Probably not going to roll out any of the equipment, so just keep everything dry. But I'm uh, going to pull that bus tie relay up uh, there, out of door 19, and likely also the left and right main transformer rectifiers. Our crew chief Al is back there looking at the strut and some other things and we're gonna get some stuff done but first uh, crew chief Al had a small presentation uh, I have no idea what he's got in store so let's check that out recording yeah mine, mine's going it's got a little red light okay um, everybody I just wanted to take this moment to uh, recognize Jamie it's okay <laughs> Jamie um, has been a dedicated volunteer since we started on this uh, inspection and everything. And uh, he's really put a lot of effort and work into it. Being a volunteer organization, we can't pay him, but we can recognize him. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to give you this, which is just not just another F4 shirt. This is one of three oh. shirts. Probably gonna be a little big on you, but it says crew. Oh, that's so awesome. you are now elevated to one of the rare of the rare. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for your good work. <laughs> oh, thank you, Al. That's awesome. Woo! Sure. Hopefully, nice. I got something. <laughs> All right. So now, back up here, in order to get to that relay, which is like down that area, we got to pull out the ARC 164 UHF radio. So let's lock wire it in. So let's cut this, pull this, the cables, and this should slide right out for us. Awesome. All right, let me go get some tools. Need to get that nut out. Seven sixteenths. Looks like I imagine we got an opening right there. Bottom. Interface cable. Head in there. Sweet. So that one lifts. These things just don't want to cooperate. Over here, real fast. You see, like this one right here. Yeah. You feel how that you got that knob and then that collar underneath it. So over here, I have the collar held up with my finger. Do you want to hold that back real fast? Yeah. Yeah. And then same thing here. Sweet. So this. She's out. She is loose. There we go. Hold those up. And you can probably let those collars go at this point. Yay! Radio's out. Hey, I see a relay. Give me a second, guys. Let me get the flashlight out and I'll uh, that. And I'll put the arrow on the screen there for you guys. But uh, that is. 
either that one or the one just forward of it over there is the DC Essential Bus Relay. So that's what we got to pull and test next. Let's do this. All right, so I moved on from the relay. I'm not gonna pull that out yet until I can positively ID which one it is. There's actually five of them in that area. So, till I, till I ID it, it won't stay in put for now. So I moved on to the transformer rectifiers and I already got the right one pulled out and this left one is even worse to remove than the, than the right. This one's at least easy because you get the six bolts right here on the side of the ejection seat uh, frame and well you got this it's hard to see but you got this lip right here there's a bolt there with a nut on the back side so you got to get a wrench on the nut and at the same time you're doing that over here and on top of that it's tilted at an angle I don't know how you maintainers did this back in the day because uh well that's a significant challenge. I've been at this for 45 minutes just to get this darn thing out. I'll get it. <laughs> Meanwhile, down ground side, got a little bit of a mess. Put the struts out. Nice one. You made a mess. Uh, just a little. You can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. That's right. There's the oil dry. It's a big omelet. <laughs> this is yeah, sure is. Doing a lot of work there. We'll go check that out in a minute. Almost got this third one out. Or fourth one. <sighs> Come on. Did I get it? <laughs> I win. Sort of. Oh, man. Yes, I do win. And I get this. I gotta get that lid off. I got the connector off. Now I gotta get those off. Some better leverage on it. Sorry if my head's in the way. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> oh, here it is. There we go. Now I got the lid off. Now I can pull those, these, the nuts holding down the DC wires, which, nope, 7 yeah, 7 sixteenths. Where did I put that socket? Where did I put that socket? It was right here. Because it was right here. There we are. Ratchet right here in my lap. Negative side is out. All right, now you're free. Woo there it is. Left hand transformer rectifier. And this one definitely is a lot older looking than the right. And that was even before we pulled the, the right hand one to send it out to the shop. 
Yippee! All right. Oh. Sacramento ALC. What years was this done? Last time this was checked. 1987. That's a bit old. That's a that's quite a long time ago. All right. Now we can go bench test this thing. All right, now what we got going on here on the strut? Okay, we got the lower half of the strut out because uh, it's evidently leaking into the upper chamber and going flat over a short period of time. Uh, so we decided uh, to take it apart and just do a reseal on it for now. Um, there's one really, of them right here, right? Right, that's one of them. And there's some on the inside too. Oh, on the inside and of this collar? This one isn't, but there's something in there that's gotta be changed. Yep. Anyways, I get the book and I can tell you all the different pieces and stuff. And there's but stuff, that's the oleo uh, part inside there, right? Well, if you see that, that's the metering rod. And it goes up inside of this tube and it basically you have a uh, small orifices, but as the strut compresses, it forces the fluid through those small orifices. And of course it, 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 it dampens the, the shock of the landing by forcing that fluid. There you go. There's that rod. It's in there. It's it's a good foot and a half tall, I think, too, right? Roughly. It's pretty big. It's a big strut. This this piece alone probably weighs 200 plus pounds. Yeah, I remember hearing the thud when you guys landed it here on the table, and then, uh, well, what, about two gallons came out of this thing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we made a little bit of a mess. Yeah, just a little bit. But you can't make an omelet out of that. Right. The difference between this strut and, and some of the others is the brake lines actually travel through the scissors. Oh. You know, so you actually have hydraulic uh, uh, bolts through here and here, and then they connect at this line and go down to the brakes. Okay, instead of them traversing the whole way down right. like these are. And instead of putting a, a lot of flexible lines in it. Hmm. What yes, and then once we get this resealed. What do we got to do inside there? Okay, well, that I need to look up yet. I'm waiting on the parts for the bottom half, and I'm sure there's going to be a couple of things to do in the upper half to check at least, so because we kept bleeding up into this chamber right here yeah. that's and one of the things on the pilot walk around i remember is to check, check this that gauge right here yeah yep. and if you look up under here you can see the the outer portion where the metering, metering rod goes yep hang on let me get the light there you guys go so that's where that metering rod goes into that that's the separator between the upper and lower well the upper it's got a some kind of mechanism up here that it, that, that chamber goes into. Right, and then this area here is the, the, the lower? The lower chamber, yeah. Okay. And of course this is the famous shrink link that the F4 has. The reason for that is to, uh, the gear will not fit into the wheel wells fully extended, so they actually pull the gear up into the uh, compressed comp uh, position to get into the gear the wheel well. Yeah, it's part of the retraction process, right? Right. Yeah, because over here on this one you guys can see an intact one. Yeah, so in the air, once once the aircraft leaves the ground, this extends as it is now. Right, and as it starts to swing up, this will stay in place here, and what happens is it winds up pulling this this way, which pulls the strut back into its regular position. Mechanical compression, and then it, and then it fits goes. in the hole, which is what that one wasn't doing. It wasn't coming, uh, the shrink link wasn't pulling up all the way, so it just kept getting hung up just enough. Yeah, we were about a half inch from closed. Oh, that's pad. Looks like grease pencil almost, but uh... As long as it ain't a crack. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the little damper pad right here where... Yeah, bumper pad, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's... That's what we got going for now. And then uh, we're making slow but sure progress on the electrical problem. Yes, I just uh, pulled the TRs for that. I'll get to that. <laughs> right. Yeah, we, we're, we're like on the, the verge of the downhill side of the roller coaster. It's just that uh, we got a chalk under the wheel right now, which is the electrical problem. Yep. But anyways, we'll get it. We It'll will. Take a while. Indeed. So. Nice. And it's forever. That's right. Ah, all right. Well, that one, was re that one really kicked my ass to get it out of the jet. But there she is, left hand. And there's our recently reworked friend, the right hand. That one's so much easier to get out. And digging through the, drawer, uh, the drawers of the test bench here, we got a cannon plug. And not only just any cannon plug, 
but it's the right one that actually fits the connectors of these things. So my job next week will be to pin this thing out and hook it up properly to the bench here. And even better is up in, up in there, it's a 15 amp breaker that protects these, uh, a 15 amp breaker on each phase, and that's a 10 amp breaker. So that's, I don't, I don't mind it being lower than that, but we're only bench testing it. Might have to try to figure out what I can use to load test this, but we'll see how this works. Is we don't know about this left hand. Hopefully it's not, hopefully it didn't die on us either. Like the right hand one once did, but we'll find out. And because if it doesn't work, that's going out to the rework shop, much like its friend here did. So awesome. All right. So good progress again this week. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.